Hello everybody and welcome to TechLore. Today I am going to be covering a very popular piece of software that's commonly talked about in the privacy community, which is KeePass. I will leave a timestamp here if you are looking for a specific thing. Um, some of you might already know a little bit about it and just wanna learn how to install it. Some of you might wanna learn how to use it and some of you might want the whole video. So I will leave the timestamps for whatever you need. So KeePass is an open source, local password manager. There are many variations of it since it's open source and anyone can take the code and make its own user interface. Today will be just the normal one that you can find on the main KeePass website, which is keepass.info. KeePass is very proven and it's probably one of the most secure password managers that we can possibly use as well as also being one of the most private ones and the fact that everything's offline is another huge benefit. The way this works is it creates a local database, which is just a file with a KDBX extension. So just imagine there was a file here that said my passwords.kdbx. As long as you have that file, you can move this file wherever you want in the world. And as long as someone doesn't know the password to get into it, it's theoretically secure. We're going to go through how this actually looks throughout the tutorial. So yes, I'm just briefly explaining this for now. KeePass is recommended for a few different reasons. One, it's open source, so people can verify the code and make sure that it is properly secure. And we can also verify there's no backdoors and there are no privacy issues. You don't have to trust a cloud service to handle security. Um, the issue with a lot of things like LastPass is you're counting on LastPass to essentially control your data and control your encryption keys and make sure that, well, they're handling that properly. Some providers are a little bit better, like 1Password seems to be a little bit better than LastPass, and Bitwarden seems to be at the top of the cloud game. A cool thing with KeePass is you can make it cloud-based as well, but much more securely because, like I said, that file is theoretically secure on its own, so you can just upload it anywhere you want. Lastly, KeePass is very versatile and it allows you to control the security and however you want to customize your database and your passwords and you're going to see in the tutorial how powerful it can be. There are so many different things you can configure and there's really no limits to what you can do with KeePass, especially since it's open source and someone can make a new interface or a new program tomorrow that does something that it didn't do beforehand. So to install KeePass, this is going to be just the standard KeePass. I will briefly cover KeePass XC, which you'll see down here. But for just normal KeePass, you're gonna to go to keepass.info, you're gonna to go to downloads, and then you're going to download just the main installer for Windows. This tutorial will be done on Windows since most of you are likely using Windows. However, the UI is the same across all platforms. Even if you use one of these other alternatives, they're all more or less the same. If you understand this one, it's not very hard to transfer over that information to the other ones. As you'll see when I compare this to KeePass XC, they are almost identical. On this list, you'll find all the recommended alternatives to KeePass. These are overall very good, except iOS support is very lacking. Uh, I think you'll find that uh, there's really only good paid options as my previous favorite KeePass client has now been discontinued. So the executable is going to install it onto your system like we have here. You're gonna get that desktop client, you're gonna be able to add it to your taskbar. You can technically do that as well with the portable version, but the portable version is mostly just for portable usage. Um, if you're going to be using this as your main password manager, I'm not sure I could fully recommend using the portable version. As for actually installing it, it's just like any other program. I didn't see a reason to walk you through the entire process because it's extremely straightforward, at least for this client. So. You just installed KeePass. What do you do now? Well, you're gonna open the program and just ignore that because I, I created my own thing beforehand. So you're going to see this, it's blank. And you're gonna ask, well, what the hell is going on here? First thing you're going to do is you're gonna to go to file and you're gonna click new. And this is gonna create a new database. So remember I said a database is like a file well, that's essentially what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be creating that file, which is gonna function as your database. So you're gonna select where you wanna save that file. For demonstration purposes, I'll be using the desktop so I can demonstrate where that file goes, but you probably don't want this on your desktop. Next, you're gonna need a master password. This is what you're going to have to type in to open that database. So like I said before, a database is pretty secure as is, and you can pretty much have it anywhere you want because people are going to need this master password to unlock it. So I'm gonna type test, test. Now there are more options. 
You can have a key file as well. So a key file is pretty much two-factor authentication, but for a database. So you someone would have to type in the test master password, and they would need to have this second file on them. So a possible scenario is you have a key file stored on a flash drive. So someone has to know the password and they have to have the flash drive plugged into the computer with this file on the flash drive in order to unlock the database. So that's an additional security precaution for some people. I won't be demonstrating with this, but it's pretty simple to set up as long as you have this key file check. I will point it out in the future as well. These two are your go-to options. And for most people, I'd say a master password is enough. Now you're gonna assign a name. So I might just to tester database. You can add a description so you can just outline what the database is going to include. This is just for you and for your own sorting benefits. Up next, you can see a default username for new entries. This essentially is just the username when you're creating a new account. So a lot of times people will use the same email as their username. So if you have a personal email, I would just put that personal email into this so that it automatically inputs that. If we go into security, for the most part, you don't normally need to touch these things. The defaults are extremely good, but you can mess with them. What I like to do, and this is just for myself, I like to click the one second delay. This is going to evaluate how fast your computer is, and it's going to automatically assign iterations based on that one second delay. As for compression, I wouldn't touch this. For a recycle bin, I recommend enabling this because if you delete something, it won't be permanently deleted for a certain amount of time. So that's always good. And as for advanced, the only thing most people here are going to probably need to touch is the bottom. You can have KeyPass either recommend you to change your master key after a certain amount of days or force you to change your master key after a certain amount of days. And this would be an additional security precaution if you wanna make sure that you're changing your passwords frequently. So after you enable all of that and you set all your settings, you can even do a color, just click OK. You This emergency sheet, to be honest, you can print it. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like, but it's pretty useless if you ask me. Here, I'll, I'll show you what's included. This is it. it. It gives you the database file location. It doesn't give you the master key, obviously, and that that's it. Um, Honestly, I'm not super sure what the use case for that is. Maybe it's for other people to know, but yeah. So now we're inside KeyPass. It's going to give you some default entries. Obviously, these are fake, but they're a great introduction. So you're going to see our first password entry. So these are each individual services. So you have sample service one. If you double click it, you're going to get the edit entry field. So you're going to have the title. So this could be Amazon. You're going to have the username, which, like I said, you could have set a default, so it would automatically apply username here. So this is likely going to be an email for a lot of services. You have your password, so you can reveal the password by showing and hiding right here. And one of the coolest things is you can just generate a password here. So you can open the password generator. And they have some presets. I don't normally use the presets. I normally select uppercase, lowercase, digits, special. And then I normally just crank this up to at least 20. Oh, sure, we'll do 37. Why not? Um, there are other settings here. For the most part, this is all you really need to touch. Once you do that, you just click OK, and you're going to see it generates a super long password for you. And just to note, some services don't like special characters. And if they don't, well, you just deselect special, and you generate a new password. And there, now you have a password without special characters. So that's an easy way to generate passwords. There's also a URL, and I would actually implement this URL, and I'll tell you why later, and I'll, I'll go more into that. There's also notes, so if you wanna add security questions here, that's how I do my security questions. I put a security question, and I just put random digits, because I don't normally answer those truthfully. And you can add an expiration date for this password, so if you wanna change your password every month or so, well, that's how you do it. There are some advanced settings as well, but for the most part, I don't touch these, but you can actually add file attachments into this uh, field as well. There are other properties like colors and tags and lots of other things that I don't really find too useful, but they are there. You can have auto type set up, and then there's also some history information as well. And now you have your first entry. So now you have Amazon, and that's, that's essentially how you modify an entry. And creating a new one is just right here. So add entry. 
and it's the same exact process except you just start from scratch but if you did have um uh, that preset username, then you can implement that as well. I forgot to mention there's also icons. So I actually like to group up icons by folders. So you're going to see here there are folders. So what I can do is I can drag Amazon into general, right? So you can have maybe administrative, you could have school, you could have work. Um, it's nice to have folders and break things up like that. But you can add icons per group. So you can edit group, you can add an icon to the group. And yeah. You can also add notes to groups, behavior for groups, auto typing, and plugins. I will not be covering plugins for this tutorial, but just know KeePass does have plugins. And I definitely encourage you to look into those because some of those are very powerful. So that covers all the basics into creating and modifying entries. If you want to delete an entry, just go here and I'm going to click delete on my keyboard, or you can just do delete entry. Now, since we enabled the recycle bin, it's going to move it to the recycle bin. So it just created this new group and there it is. So if you want to restore it, you can just move it right back to general and it's not gone. If you look here, database.kdbx with an asterisk, that asterisk means there are unsaved changes. Now we have never actually saved this database. So if we were to close out of the program, everything we've done would have been lost. So I'm going to do control S on my keyboard or you can go to save. And as you can see, there is database here. This is now updated and saved. So remember I told you earlier, there is a file that you can move anywhere you want and it's just fully secure and you don't have to worry about it. That's it. Okay. So if I close out a key pass and I open this file, see, it's going to ask you for that master key. You're going to type in that master key we, we originally created and there you go. There's also the key file, which I said you could set up. So if you did set up a key file, you would need both a master password and the key file, and then you would be able to get in. And there you go. One final thing, what exactly does actually inputting your passwords into a website look like? Well, you have a couple options. The first one, you can just go here and control C on your keyboard, and you can see that you have a certain amount of time to type in that password. So if I go here and paste, it's going to paste. If I remove that and I wait for the screen bar to go away and I paste, you see nothing happens. You also have an option of copying the username, which is control B and it's the same thing here. So control B, boom. If you don't want to use keyboard shortcuts, you have copy username and copy password as well. Now, the much easier way of doing this, which is what I recommend everybody does. You can click here, click here, then you can do alt tab. So this is how you can cycle between pages in most operating systems, right? Alt plus tab. So I click inside the first field, alt tab, click, and then I paste control V. And as you can see, it's going to automatically paste your username and password and you never have to do the control copy paste ever again. Um, it's extremely simple. This is why I said earlier, I recommend you add a URL here because what you can do is you can simply double click the URL once you've logged into your password manager. And let's say I just selected a field, boom, control V, and then it would paste the whole password into here, right? And then what we can do is we can just leave this password manager open while we're doing our browsing and we can just double click URLs and access websites and we don't need to save our passwords into our browser and it's actually still pretty convenient. Again, KeePass works for you, not against you. There are plenty of other features that you can explore, such as finding things, and they also has a duplicate password feature. It has similar passwords. It has password qualities expiring in. It's a very powerful tool, and we could probably go on for a whole 20 minutes about this. Maybe we'll save that for an advanced tutorial. Everything I've shown you is pretty much all you need to get started. Now, let me show you KeePass XC, which is kind of considered the updated version of KeePass. So let's just do passwords, test, continue. You're going to see it's pretty similar. You have the de decryption time. It's just things are laid out a little bit differently. Continue, password, and you can add additional protection. See, so you can, this one has YubiKey instead of the Windows user account. There's also the key file. Oop. And same thing, we get to save a database. And there we go. It's almost identical. If we move them side by side, you have create a new database, create a new database, folder, folder. It's more or less the same. It just has a more updated UI. And personally, I've found KeePassXE to have better support, especially on Linux. I have tried using just 
key pass on Linux, and it just does not work for me. Now, your mileage may vary. I'm not saying you're going to have the same experience, but overall, I use KeePass XE on all of my devices, and I recommend it more than KeePass. One final thing, and this is, is not going to be the tutorial for it. I'll leave a card up on the top right of the screen. But you can sync this file to any cloud provider of your choice. And I have a tutorial that I just said will show how to do that. You just drag this into Google Drive. Um, and as long as you're signed in on Google Drive on all of your devices and the program is able to find this database file in the same location, this will sync perfectly across all of your devices. Uh, it's wonderful. And this setup enables you to do so many more things versus a, a service like maybe Bitwarden where you absolutely have to sign in in order to access your passwords onto a site. What I personally do, I actually have this database file on my flash drive that I carry with me in my backpack everywhere I go. So even if I lose my phone, if I lose my laptop and I can't get into them for whatever reason, I still have that database file on my flash drive. And as long as I can get that plugged in into a public computer and I can get a portable version of KeePass, which I also have on that flash drive. So remember I showed you that portable version on the website. If you put that on a flash drive with your database file, you can essentially open your database file from any computer. So the cloud syncing and the flash drive configuration are just two great examples of how you have a freedom to do whatever you want with this database file. I'm sure there are thousands of other possibilities that you can utilize this kind of setup, but those are just a couple that I've utilized in the past. I hope it demonstrates the power of the database. One last clarification, it doesn't matter where you created the database. Um, it doesn't matter if you used KeePass XC, it doesn't matter if you used KeePass, as long as it's using the same version of the database, every KeePass client should be opening that file. And that, my friends, is the finale of the KeePass tutorial. Um, I hope that helped a little bit, kind of clear up KeePass. I know it's a little bit of a confusing tool for beginners, but once you figure it out and you learn all the ins and outs and you realize how great of a tool it is, it's really hard not to recommend it to people because it really is just fantastic. I, I really have nothing but great things to say about KeePass. If you have any questions about KeePass, please leave them below. I know it's kind of a complex tool and I might have missed one or two things, so definitely leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you. If not, hopefully someone else does. And yeah, I hope this helps some people out. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to our patrons who support us every month. It is absolutely phenomenal. And that is all I have to say. Thank you, everybody. Have a lemurious day.